Hi everybody, Andy Tanner here. I am so excited for basic cash flow. This is probably one of my favorite things to teach. I'll tell you, I love the fundamentals and technicals. This one, just like those are, power packed, filled with information. Let's hop right in. You and I are going to learn how money's made up, down, and sideways. Might be a little bit familiar with up, but down and sideways are new to a lot of people, especially sideways. We're going to talk about capital gains and cash flow, spend a little time on what the goals are. Of course, we're going to use the computer so we uh, can go out and golf, you know, while we're making money online or whatever. We're going to learn vocabulary. Notice I always put a bullet in for that. Every class I teach, I try to remember the vocabulary words that might be new. You probably, if you, if you took fundamentals with me and you spent that time with me, you probably have already noticed that you're hearing vocabulary words more often in CNBC, uh, the Wall Street Journal, with your your advisors, and it's going to get better and better from here, I'll tell you that. We invest based on criteria, not gut feelings, so we're going to learn more important cash flow uh, criteria right here. And then we're going to discover one of uh, Warren Buffett's favorite strategies, which is also one of mine. I, I almost hesitate to say fa favorite strategy because I don't want to convince you of one strategy over another because I'm about education, not advice. Is that a good segue into a disclaimer or is that a good segue? I thought it was. Planned it that way. But this disclaimer is important. Don't treat it like the flight attendant taking off before a plane saying, hey, you need to pay attention. You do because all investing in the securities market involves risk. Yes, it does. And if you make a decision to trade, guess what? Same as last time. That's your choice. And I'll be responsible for my trades too. If I make money, it'll be my fault. And if I lose money, it'll be my fault, not yours. And that's the way it'll be with you. Uh, this is for education only. It's a basic course. It's not designed to give financial or professional advice. And it certainly isn't to persuade you to trade any certain instrument or any instrument at all or any type of option or, or one style over another, even one security. Now, why am I hammering this so hard at this particular time more than normal? Well, I'm going to show you some of my own trades. And generally, in a, I, I don't show a lot of my trades in public forums. I really don't. But I think it is very beneficial to the educational process in this instance to show demonstration of how it works in reality, not theory. So I keep the trades very basic. Uh, I think at this level, if a person can learn to make an extra 500 bucks here or another $1,000 in a month, that they're pretty thrilled. And then they can build on that from there. So understand that I'm not trying to recommend you trade like I trade. And please do not construe any of the instruments I use in, in, in this education as a recommendation. I just want to show you a process. So if that's understood, and I think it is, investing has risk. It's for grown-ups, not for kids. Then, uh, then off we go. We can get rolling right in here. Where are we on the continuum? Let's take a look. Well, I'll tell you what. You may or may not have started here, but if you did start here, you're no longer in ignorance now. I'll tell you that. You know what fundamentals are. You know what technicals are. Um, you know, phase zero, let's check it off the list. You're in phase one. And we've done fundamentals. We've done technicals. Now we're going to do cash flow. We're going to do strategies, vocabulary. And in this particular class, I'm going to work on your context uh, you know, much, much more than in the first two. We're really going to work on that because we're dealing with cash flow. You know what's cool? We are almost through phase one. God, it went fast, didn't it? In fact, there's four classes here. This is number three of four. So you are 75% of the way there after this session. And then you go to phase two. And you know what the good news is? After phase two is phase three. And guess what that's all about? That's about actually making the income, practicing it, getting the experience and actually getting some money in your hands. So I'm excited for you. All you do, keep moving forward. It's kind of a fun journey. Has it been fun for you? It's fun for me. I hope it's fun for you because I love teaching it. It's a lot of fun. Where are we at here? Cash flow. Got this one kind of under our belt. Got this one under our belt. Now we're going to do cash flow. We'll do risk management next time. What are your goals? People will, this is driving me crazy. Can I vent? No, don't want to spend our precious time venting. But I'll tell you what, they call me or they email me or they Facebook me or they Twitter me and they say, Andy, should I buy some gold or not? Should I buy Apple? Is it too high or not? And I'll say, well, I can't give you financial advice. I'm just a teacher. 
but I'm curious, what are your goals? Well, I don't know, I just want to make money. Well, let's not just be like a little kid. Let's be like a professional. What kind of money do we want to make? What is weak? What is strong? You look at your income statement, your balance sheet, and you know that some things will affect your net worth, like a capital gain. Some will affect your cash flow, like rent, right? Some are for insurance. Well, let's look at this. A lot of, of stock trading is buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. It's building your net worth if you're doing it right, killing your net worth if you do it wrong. Uh, but it, there is a very important reason to make this distinction of, you know, 401ks. Some of them have mutual funds that pay a dividend, but they're usually reinvested for more. So that's kind of what growth companies do. That's what a growth fund is going to do. And it's all about growth, not cash flow. You know what? I would like to offer you the challenge to think about this, to think about money you could spend today, <clears throat> where financial independence, you start getting a taste of it now, see, rather than waiting five years and making this thing such a dream in the future that may or may not happen, let's get a taste of that cash flow we can spend right now and wean ourselves off a job. Let's not say, oh, I'm going to retire in 10 years and that's it, I'm done. No, let's just wean ourselves off it. Let's start getting passive income now and more and more passive income where we're relying on the job less and less and less. And over time, we wean ourselves off the job. I think that's what I like to teach people to do. I think that'd be really cool if they would. Hedging we'll do next time. Let's not spend our precious time talking about that because we're going to have plenty of time talking about that later. But let's talk about cash flow. And let's work on our context because I would hate to show you a lot of cool techniques and not have it in the proper context. Okay, here's a person's problem right here, baby. It's this number. Got to eat, got to sleep, got to have a roof on our head, got to feed those kids, got to clothe them. And this right here, grab a piece of scratch paper, post-it note, whatever, write down your number. You did. I know you did the assignment. I know you did a fundamental analysis. I know you know what that number is for you. Write it down on a post-it note and stick it on your mirror because that's the nut. That's the problem we got to solve here. It doesn't go away on its own. A lot of people use a job to solve this problem. And I think let's change our mentality from one day I won't have to go to work anymore and I'll just quit and then I'll have all this money that I'll just use. Let's start right now. Let's get a taste of this. Let's go out and let's buy some stock. And maybe let's, uh, shoot, you know, let's just get a dividend. You know, there's a lot of great stocks that have a dividend. Verizon pays a big dividend, for example. I'm not recommending, no recommendation, just an example. Whew. Got to watch that legal stuff. Holy cow. But I, let's go out and make a dollar, for crying out loud. Okay? And let's just get a taste of what it's like to make income somewhere other than a job. Let's start making that transition, little by little. And then let's make $10. And then let's make a hundred dollars. And then let's make a thousand dollars. And each month, let's try to make a little bit more in cash flow or in income from our assets and less from our job, until something cool happens. Until you have a passive income above your expenses. That's what financial independence is. Financial independence isn't having a million dollars. It's not having ten billion dollars. It's it's this. Can you live independently? Do you have enough asset? Do you have enough payment coming from your assets that you can live? Whew, let's breathe easy on that. Isn't that a good feeling? Imagine how that would feel to simply have the assets to produce the income where you didn't have to worry about money anymore. Then you can focus on the important things in your life. Hey, this is traditionally what people think about when they think of wealth building. They think million dollars, 401k, build a million dollars when I'm 65, I'm done. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of things that go into that. This over here on this side has to do with the skill of making these assets work hard. And if you have a skill that makes the assets work hard, this number gets bigger. So I like the idea of, of a different pathway maybe as we talk about cash flow is to think about, hey, both numbers are important. Do we want a million dollar net worth? Sure we do. But we also want a cash flow above our expenses. And let's say rather than setting a goal of saying I'm retiring at 65 come what may, Let's set a goal of saying, hey, as soon as I have an income that is greater than my expenses that comes from assets, then I'm done, and not a day before. And that way you might even be able to retire early. Now, helps me as I get in these sessions to think about why you and I are doing this. I know you have important reasons for being here, and they're all correct. 
In fact, whatever you feel is right, it's going to be right for you. Maybe it's time with family. That's a big one for me. You know, maybe it's travel. That's a huge one for me. Leisure. You know, you probably want to give some money away, which helps drive you forward. And so as we go through these classes together, let that dominate your mind. But you see all this stuff here, this travel, this leisure, this family time? Guess where it comes from? It doesn't come from net worth. It comes from cash flow. Can you afford to do this each month? Do you have enough money coming in monthly that you can do all this stuff? That's the big question. So let's work on cash flow and net worth. Let's also take a look at our current plan. Let's poke some holes in it if we can. Let's do a contrast as we think about cash flow. What's the wrong way to go about it? Well, I don't know that there's a wrong or right way. I don't think I'm allowed to label one as good or bad. You know, we're not going to advise you there, but we will ask some questions about the current plan. Be very honest with you. In this series you and I are going through together, you know, I want you I want to hold your hand through it. I'm going to ask you some really interesting questions. Three status of your plan. I wrote about this in 401 Chaos. Number one. Is your current plan really, is it, is it impossible to get these goals you know, that we talked about with your current plan? In other words, doing what you're doing now, does this stuff become an impossibility? Some people are just literally hoping for magic. There's not many. I don't think you're in that category. But there's some that say, hey, I'm going to find a lamp and rub it, and there'll be a genie in there. Boom, I'll have everything I want a million bucks. I don't think we need to spend time on that because that's not you. But some people are like that. Um what I see around the country and really the world more than anything else is the status of their plan is they're hopeful. And that's dangerous in my opinion because, you know, lottery people, is it possible to win the lottery? Yeah, is it likely? No, it's hopeful. You know, sweepstakes hopeful. And the data on 401ks, you know, RRSPs and, and uh, stuff like that in Canada and, and 401ks in the United States, it's just a tough deal because the numbers are saying that this market's going to have to do some pretty amazing things, and you have no control over that. You just have to hope it works. What I like and what I think feels comfortable now for us, I think what uh, makes this journey a lot more fun is when we believe that all this stuff is actually not just hope or not just a dream or not just a far-off goal, when we actually see that it's likely to happen. And when, a, when you become educated as an investor and you start doing the things we're going to be talking about, put a power team together, hey, these things become uh, probable. You know, they become likely. And that's more fun to go through life knowing that, that uh, these things are going to happen instead of hoping that they might. So, you know, watch out for that hope. You know, we look at the decade of nothing we just went through. Hasn't been impressive. We look at the mutual fund performance. This is interesting. It's called SPIVA, Standard and Poor's Index versus Actively Managed Funds. Look at this. S&P 500 last year had a nice run in 2010, a lot higher than average, 15%. Not enough to get it done, though. Average large, all the large cap funds average less than that. So think about that. Actively managed, you know, that's what that A stands for. And these guys are supposed to be stock pickers, and they're getting their butt beat by the S&P 500. Three-year annualized, almost identical to a hundred, you know, to point hundredth of a percent here. And then we have the five-year, which is almost identical. S&P edges it slightly. And what does that tell you? That means you're paying bill billions in fees to just do whatever the market does. Look at Fidelity Magellan here on the bottom, and the S&P on the top, from 2000 to today, 11 years. These guys are worse than the S&P. They're just mimicking the market, except a little worse than what the market's doing. Really had a bad time here. But they've collected five, four to five billion dollars in fees over the last 15 years from people. To do what? To do this? To me, that is not a cash flow plan that I like. You can choose it if you want. It's hands off. It's not for the educated, I don't think. So that's kind of a rough deal. You know, you tie yourself to the Dow, tie yourself to the S&P. You have goals to, to have $1.2 million to retire on. If you're only at 120 k and that was your goal at age 40, you know, to have 1.2 at age 60, now you're 50 and you're not well on your way, that's rough because that means the S&P, you know, you want this thing to go tenfold for you, that means the S&P's got to go tenfold if you're mimicking the market and doing what that does. And, you know, look at that chart. How many financial advisors would say that's likely? You know, I'd say it's hopeful. Anything's possible. So I just want you to know, learning this cash flow stuff is a big deal to have control a little bit over stuff. And uh, we don't want to just hope. This is probably my favorite graphic that I, that I think I've built 
because it really captures how I feel about financial independence. The attitude of just hoping it happens by chance or I wake up someday and, and I'm done to saying, you know what, I wish I had things I could do tomorrow to put another brick in the wall, right, of my financial independence. I wish there was something that, someone that could teach me what I could do today to build that brick. And that's why I built this series. You know, that's why I want to take people clear to the proficiency stage. Because once you get to that proficiency stage, that's right what you're doing. Every day you have something you can do to cause something to happen. Policy. And, uh, and financial independence, I believe, in our day and age requires our attention. The pensions was the worst cultural thing that because that, we just figured, hey, I go to work and I work for 30 years and then I retire. And when we replaced the pensions with 401ks, we didn't tell anybody, uh, not happening that way, guys. Sorry, just doesn't work that way. This guy right here, he's got it down. He's putting in a brick every day doing something every day to prepare, prepare for that future. And a lot of people say, Andy, I wish there was something I could do. Well, there is, and, and it's called education. It's called learning how. So we're going to go and start with uh, an upward market now and talk about how we're not going to mess with this uh, silliness anymore. We're going to do it the right way.